stand tonight to give you the crutch of this night. We're dealing with the family, and dealing with the family, we can't help but notice that the family uh, is under attack. And one of the ways that the family is under attack is that the family is being constantly redefined. And as things are constantly redefined, when you redefine a thing one time too many, then it doesn't mean anything at all. Marriage has been redefined as a union between two men uh, and two women and a man and a woman. And swiftly, they're moving toward the definition being any combination that you would like. And once that happens, then we will see why Paul said the days will come when men would forbid marrying. Why marriage? Because marriage is God's first institution. The Bible opens with a marriage. The Bible closes with a, a marriage. Marriage is God's way. Western uh, civilization would not be what it is today were it not for the two-parent uh, family, the, the union between a husband and the wife. But tonight, I want to speak to you about something that has happened in society. We see it over and over and over. And in many ways, the church has just allowed this thing to be. When the Lord, God of the Bible, looked down upon man and saw that man was evil only continuously and that every thought of man's heart was evil, God said this. God said, it repented me that I made man. And the Lord dis decided to destroy man from the face of the earth. But thank God, one man, Noah, found grace in the sight of the Lord. And because of one man, that man's wife was spared, his sons were spared, and his sons' wives were spared. And God gave, again, the male-female construct, told Noah to get a male and a female of every animal and bring them to the ark. Why? Because he wanted the species to continue to survive and to live. The Lord opened up the earth and the, the waters gushed out from the deep. The Lord opened up the heavens and it did rain for 40 days and 40 nights. And all humanity except Noah and his family was lost. And then God caused the waters to begin to recede. And the Lord began to speak to Noah and God said to Noah, I am going to give you a sign because the earth will never again be flooded with water. I will never allow the waters to drown the entire earth or to wipe out all mankind. And as a sign that I will not do this, I am going to put a bowl in the clouds. And he said when he see the bowl, it will remind him of the covenant that he made with the human race. But also when we see the bowl, it is supposed to remind us of the covenant that God made with the human race. Praise the Lord. Every time we see the bowl, we're to think about God. Think about his mercy. Think about his grace. Think about his love. Think about the fact that it is of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed because his compassion fell if not. But instead, when we see the colors of the rainbow today, the truth is we do not think about the God of the Bible. We do not think about his mercy. We do not think about his grace. In fact, the colors of God's beautiful rainbow today are being used to remind us to glorify and to point out a lifestyle that the God of the Bible has declared to be evil. And that is homosexuality, lesbianism, all things LBGTQ. In saying this tonight, I want to give, uh, I want to say that we certainly are, are praying and our hearts go out to those who were tragically murdered in Orlando. What happened to those people was wrong. What that man did to those people was, was wrong. Amen. They were innocent. They were not bothering him. He had no right to go into that club and to murder, not just kill, but murder 49 innocent people. And then he lost his own life. Contrary to what they're trying to tell you, it had nothing to do 
with biblical Christianity had nothing to do with the church. From what the reports say, this man was struggling with demons of his own. His ex-wife said that uh, she felt that he had homosexual tendencies. Well, the ex-wife ought to know. And while shooting people, he called 911. And he wanted it known that he pledged allegiance to the uh, religion of our enemy. ISIS, Islam. The truth is, if that young man would have listened to us, he'd be alive today, and those other 49 people would be alive today, and the wounded would not be wounded. So we're not unsympathetic. We, our heart goes out to them. But we do not, however, alter God's truth or change our program or take back what the Lord has given us. We can't do it. We can't do it. Amen. Uh, Gary, show them on the screen. When dealing with God's bow, God's rainbow, with God's rainbow, as you see, the color red is always on top. It's always the first color, and it goes that down from there. I won't take the time tonight to deal with the significance of the colors that... Uh, uh, the LBGTQ community has uh, applied to the colors because the colors of the rainbow, it, it, that's not the message. The entire bow is the message. The bow is a sign of God's mercy, God's grace, God's love, and the, the sheer power of God. Do you not know that there is enough water on earth right now without a drop of rain falling from the sky? To flood the earth. But it's the power of God that keeps the water compressed. And keep it pressurized. And keep it in its oceans and its sea. Because God said it won't, would not happen again. So therefore it can't. We want to be where every time we see this. We think about his love. We think about his power. And we think about his grace. In God's rainbow, we have seven colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the LBGTQ community, their flag have six colors. Six, the number of man. Seven, the number of God. Praise the Lord. And we see here in this large sign, we have before you Genesis chapter 9, verse 13. God says, I do set my bow. It shall be for a covenant between me and the earth. A covenant that God made. And he went on, he spoke to the flesh, he spoke to the human race. He made us a promise that he would not flood the earth. We have failed the Lord to the point that we, we've given so much ground that when our children, our little boys, want to play with things that, that are rainbow colored, we take it from them and say, that's LBGTQ or don't do that because we don't want you to be soft or we don't want you to be funny. But they didn't make the rainbow. They didn't create those colors. The God of the Bible did. And tonight we're proud to stand to identify, not to create a new color, to come up with a new symbol, but the one that God made. I think the Lord got it right the first time. I think God knew what he was doing. This is his sign, and it is a sign that the Lord has shown mercy to us. And I heard him say that the next time, it won't be water. Judgment is coming. Oh, judgment is in the earth. But it won't be water, but it will be fire. Tonight, we gladly... Stand with the colors behind us. Those who are watching, who are streaming, those who will see this on the, um, in our various means of outlet. We have not changed our position. We have not began to embrace a lifestyle that God says is wrong. Amen. We stand on the word of the Lord, but we declare that we will not give God's precious rainbow to those who are living in a lifestyle that the God of the Bible says is wrong. Amen. 
in my clothes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. In my closing, they interviewed a pastor whose son was at the Pulse nightclub who got shot multiple times. The pastor was a man of color, but he was not African American. I don't know exactly what his what he was, but this man of God walked into the room and saw his son, who was at this homosexual club, and he looked at his son, and the news really wanted to know, well, what did you say to him? I got a feeling if they would have known that the dad actually said what the dad said, they probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have uh, aired it. But it was a live interview. And the father walked in, he said... He, he looked at his son and he said to his son, son, you know, Jesus has given you another chance. He said, Jesus. Somebody ought to shout something. And what moved me is that that boy lying there shot up in the bed looked at his father and said dad I know that he has so you know that I'm praying now that the young man take advantage of the rainbow of the mercy and of the grace that God gave him that the Lord showed to him, young man, give your heart to Jesus. He will save you. He will set you free. He loves everybody. But this rainbow does not belong to the homosexual community. It belongs to the God of the Bible. It's our sign. Let us praise the Lord for his favor for his love and for his mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.